Live from the home of Al Capone, Michael Jordan, and Deep Dish Pizza. Pizza. Giving it to you straight from the horse's mouth. Unfiltered and restoring hope to the podcast universe. Gary Franchi. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the GCast. Ooh, it welcome is back. a hot day in Chicago. We're going to change that opening, honey. I know. We keep talking about it. No, no. We have to add Lori Lightfoot's name to it. <laughs> the home of Lori Lightfoot. Do it. Yeah. Where she lets the riders take the streets. We'll lose subscribers quick, <laughs> very quickly. Home of Antifa <laughs> of the Midwest. She's oh, terrible, 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 terrible. Speak into the microphone. Mm, can you hear me? We better? want to hear your beautiful voice. Thank you. Uh, honey, how was your week? Good? It got better. Yeah. <laughs> it got better. It's been wild. Um, what about like last weekend after we closed the show and then like all mm. hell broke loose Once all again. weekend? What the heck? Yeah, everyone's been on pins and needles waiting to see how bad these protesters We were listening to police scanners. Be. Yeah, and still are. I mean, we have a expected protest in our area this weekend this weekend is supposed to go down and even yeah. the target near us is locked down they've mm -hmm. got uh, they're burning police cars in aurora they're threatening to go into residential areas yeah yeah no joke lock and load <laughs> you know a friend of mine uh he's running for office and they said hey uh guess what we can't really guarantee your safety the chief of police told him that right? yeah when you know? I heard that, I'm, I was I was floored. Well, because they're overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. They're overwhelmed with what's happening. And we're going to talk about a lot of that today. We've got a lot of news we're going to cover. Mm -hmm. We've got an excellent guest today. Ben Burquam yes. is joining us. Uh, he's from Frontline America. And he. we're going to go into some of the stuff that's happening in the country. We'll, we got some news about Rod Rosenstein. Stein. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I don't even know where we go. Like... like the A block. We got National Donut Day. Is it really National Donut Day today? It's about that time. <laughs> I mean, or is that just like a joke? Because like we're talking about all the stuff the going cops. on with police and stuff. <sighs> if we pass out donuts, will everyone just take a break and just uh, you know calm down a little bit? Only if they're Krispy Kreme. That'll do. Do you remember when Krispy Kreme came to town? Yeah, they were everywhere. People went bizarre. They were crazy about it, and then they disappeared. And then there was like one left. And I then it was gone. I don't get it. I don't know what happened there. I wasn't paying attention. I can get them at Jewel. <laughs> well, that's the thing. I think they bake them and they bring them in now. So they you were know. worried about like the entire store is closing down. Didn't Dan do like a run? He, he does all these weird like little runs out to do to do pickups. Mm -hmm. Like he'll go and get like uh, Piquad's pizza and do a special run for that. And he'll go into yeah. the city and do other. Didn't he do one for Krispy Kreme? I bet. I could totally see him doing that. I bet that. he would do that. Oh, we need a, a National Donut Day. Maybe that's the peace offering. Do you have a favorite donut, Angie? Uh, no, I don't. You What? I don't. I don't like, I mean, you know me. I'm indecisive. <laughs> <laughs> I can't commit. The, the marriage and the children is where I committed. Beyond that, like, I don't give a, you know what. <laughs> uh, French cruller. <laughs> Marble. Those are, those are okay. What about, um... What about the uh, the marble French cruller? I, I I do love the French cruller or a good buttermilk. Mm. Yeah, they're all good. I don't like jelly donuts. I think those are disgusting. No, I'm not a big fan of the jelly donuts at Dunkin', you know, or any like the like the, they had the one that's like powder with like a, a real heavy cream inside. I'm like, mm, it's a little bit too rich for me. There's a place in California that we went to, and the oh. donuts were out of this world. What are they called? Cronuts? Cron yeah. <laughs> Cronuts. Yeah. It's like a croissant, but a donut. It was amazing. Yeah. We went to like the place where they actually invented them. See, now if I was a protester or if I was a looter, I would bust open. The That's the first place I'd go. <laughs> the donut place. <laughs> We're going to the donut shop. I'll be back. But you know all the Just cops would be standing my spot. outside guarding that place. <laughs> they, That's the first place they would be like locked down. But you know what? It's not even funny to joke because what is happening well, we in this country. we have to a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I know. Because, I mean, we all need a little release here because oh. this has been horrific. It has been. People are dying. I mean, uh, hanging out with our neighbor and he's just like going through his TikTok feed and it's just like, mm. 
beat down after beat down, people getting run over, cops getting punched, people getting shot. I've never seen anything like this in my entire life. It changes everything. Yeah. How, I mean, to move forward from this, day by day has been, you know, quite a bit of a challenge to move forward from the pandemic, from the riots, mm -hmm. from from the killings and the and the protesters and the looting and the vandalism day by day it's been challenging and so difficult so i have been traumatized and i've said this on my show on the next 100%. news network i literally i'm i'm really good at compartmentalizing information mm -hmm. so that i don't go crazy i've been doing it for years and years and years you are you've always been able to handle this and just have a regular day with me and the kids and and afterwards. sort of like escape like my news is when I do the news, right? And then I can cut it off and then I can go spend time with my family, right? That's what most people do with their work. Now, of course, being plugged into the news cycle 24 hours a day, you know, you still have to be able to compartmentalize and shut it off. But this is different, Angie. This is different. Yeah, I, I'm, on, I'm on pins and needles just wondering how far it's going to go. Um, scared for police officers, scared for their lives now. Oh, I mean, even just shop owners, people, you know, looting the shops and, mm -hmm. and even, uh, you know, it's, it's Black Lives Matter, but why are they going and attacking black shops? No, owners? there, there's absolutely no justification for that. None. I none. And I don't want to hear no it. No justification for any of it. Yeah. But being able to compartmentalize things is how I survive. But these days has been so traumatic. I haven't been able to. Yeah. And I, because I'm like, listen in the police scanner. And it's like so close to home. You are tapped in 24 seven, Gary. But the thing is, it's so close to home, you know, because I'm always reporting on things that are happening so far away. And it's like, you know, you're in the safety of your nice overheated studio, <laughs> you know, from all the lights in here. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, now it's at your doorstep. And You've been seeing tweets and we're going out to the suburbs and then they see two towns over our be the beautiful downtown completely boarded up. Unlike anything I've ever seen in my entire life. And downtown Chicago. Downtown destroyed. Chicago destroyed. Businesses destroyed. And, and it's not just well off corporate businesses or big names. We're talking about restaurant owners. We're talking mm -hmm. about shop owners. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's interesting too is um, you've got, you've got, first it was the pandemic, right? And you don't go, don't go in the, uh, you know, uh, don't go out, right? Do we have yep. that tweet? Where's that tweet from uh, Adam Carolla? This is great. Image three. Funny guy, Adam Carolla. Adam Carolla, can we bring up that tweet there? Um, we have it. There it is. Okay, CNN last week. How are we going to stop these sunbathers on California beaches? CNN this week, masses in the streets walking arm in arm. Good for them. Think about that. You know, I'm going to find another tweet here. It's, it's in the same vein of, of conversation here. I posted it to my Facebook uh, oh, what page. What a way to share, show the hypocrisy and the BS on no, what the media that? loves to do. Okay, um, looking for the tweet, looking for the tweet, looking for the tweet. Okay, so there's the ad. Okay, so this one, I don't know, Brian, if you could pull up the NDI. This is from Ron Coleman. I found this one as well. These governors were so good at telling storekeepers, school children, invalids, and working people what to do, where to do it, and what will happen to them if they resist. And a bunch of punks from the suburbs are throwing bricks and burning cop cars, and they fold fast. What about uh, the governor of North Carolina? Do you know what he was doing? No. Okay, first of all, he says he's going to shut down. Uh, he refused to open up the state because he wanted to have uh, this the lockdown. He wanted The Republican National Convention was scheduled for uh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Because the governor wouldn't reopen the state, Trump and the RNC decided to move locations. But yet, he's seen marching in the streets with the protesters. Oh, right. I, I do recall the story now. Yeah. I. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. How many stories do we have like this? It's just, it's a lot. 
Well, there's another tweet we have here. Um, Brian, this is going to be image number... How are uh, people keeping up with all of this, too? Three? Is right? Image, image three. Chris Martin Palmer. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Look at that. So on the left side, you can see he says, burn that S-H-I-T down. Burn it all down. Right? And he was doing a retweet or a comment tweet on a photograph of a burning building. Now, I'm not sure if that building is an actual building that was caught up in all the madness. But obviously, it's representative of what he... Oh, I guess it was a real... Wow, that was a real burn, burning building. I've seen so many images, I can't... Oh, that's, that's the Minnesota police station? Yeah, I couldn't... I mean, we've seen so many crazy images, I, didn't realize I couldn't it was, remember it. But yeah, it's from... It is the Minnesota police station. I... You know what? I didn't realize it was that bad. Reminds me of that movie, what was it called? Precinct 13? Where they attacked a police station? So sad. So sad. So on the left side, he says, burn it down, burn it all down. Chris Martin Palmer of the NBA. And on the right side, uh, okay, so the funny part, if you have the picture there, I think it, the, my printer isn't so good. Okay, so the left tweet is 528, May 28th. And then a couple days later, on the 31st, he says, they just attacked our sister community down the street. It's a gated community. They tried to climb the gates. They had to beat them back then destroyed a Starbucks, and they're now in front of my building. Get these animals, TF, out of my neighborhood. Go back to where you live. Oh, my God. So on the left side, he's like, yeah, burn it all down. And then when it's at your doorstep, he's like, oh, my goodness, don't come to my house. Now he's a special kind of jerk. Oh, yeah. Chris Martin Palmer. I mean, I don't follow NBA, so I don't know who he is. He's nobody to me, but. But a lot of these celebrities are, are just tweeting out just nonsense and just, you know, adding fuel to the fire. Well, speaking of celebrities, okay. <laughs> they want the celebrities. Where is that? I got that Lego story. They're pulling Lego police um, sets off, oh, off God, of yeah. stores. That's an interesting Okay, one. so Megan Rapinoe, John Legend, Lizzo, and more celebs are signing a letter to defund the police. <laughs> Can you believe these people? defund the police okay yeah i'm not surprised that sure. they said that because they're pretty disconnected from reality <laughs> they sure are you see that story what does it say do you, do you have it up uh-huh what is it rita there wealthy celebrities like soccer star megan rapinoe did i say that right who i don't cares? even know who they I don't are even care she's trash uh, musicians john legend and lizzo are left-wing activists and actress jane fonda have all signed an open letter <laughs> demanding the div divestment from police the letter was posted on defendingblacklives.org entitled a letter to demand divestment from police and an investment in black communities according to rolling stone the letter was released by activist patrice colors a co-founder of Black Lives Matter and a co-founding member of the Movement for Black Lives, a coalition of more than 100 black rights organizations. Angie, do you know what's going to happen? <sighs> Can I paint a picture for you? Go right ahead, babe. <laughs> okay. Guess they, what? Now, my, my what are, their demands are extreme. Well, it's, here's how ridiculous this is. Well, my cousin sent me a link. And it was to law enforcement today. It was an article where they said, this is what will happen if you defund the police. Now you're going to have private security contractors who are driven by profit and not public service and going around armed and trying to make as much money for the corporation as possible. It yeah. reminds me of that movie or that uh, TV series. Uh, oh, man, it was on. Oh, it was so good. Oh, Jericho. Oh, right. They had the private security contractors running around. Mm -hmm. and But I thought to myself, okay, that's one thing. I mean, the article was, was so – it went into so much detail about, uh, well, if you don't pay to have your house protected, then they're not going to come to your house. Or if you have a special investigation, you got to pay this much. Like everything has its own price tag. You know, if they're, if they're willing to – to defund this, right? If they're willing to back up this crazy plan, are they willing to stick it out to make change happen the way it should happen? 
or what is their idea? What is their idea of reality? What what do they think is going to happen? What is their solution? <laughs> I mean, is Megan Rapinoe going to go run around and kick people? You know, she's a soccer. She's the U.S. soccer team girl. She's the one that was yes. like stepping on the American flag. Ugh. You know. Uh, yeah. So Megan Rapinoe is going to save America. She's going to defund the police, and she's going to get out there, and she's going to start. She's going to start apprehensions on her own. <laughs> but no, you know, Angie, we're talking about vigilante justice. If there is no police force, the people will take matters into their own hands, and it will look like a war zone everywhere. Completely. And if it doesn't look like a war zone already. Can you imagine that? But maybe that's what they want. Well, I believe that this is all manufactured. I think that the the rage, of course, with with what happened to George Flynn, you know, he should not have died in police custody. There's no question about that. But the fact of the matter is that you had a horrific video of his death and the media plays it up and stokes the fan, uh, uh, fans the flames of racism that are already simmering because Black Lives Matter is not, it didn't just show up one day. No. And the media comes in and fans the flames, gets the people all worked up. And this is, I believe, all a long course of events in order to remove President Trump from office, to completely exhaust the American people so that they surrender because they're so exhausted that they just feel like there's no other way out but to vote for Joe Biden. See, they tried to get him out, Angie, with the Russia hoax. They tried to get him out with the impeachment. They tried to, you know, screw him up with the pandemic, with the overblown numbers. And now this. And here we are. I mean, it took, they definitely took advantage of this opportunity, of this horrendous, horrendous moment in time. They're destabilizing the entire nation. Yeah, there, there is no unity here. There is no justice when it's become this violent and this separated you know the media has done an excellent job continuing its narrative to separate us um i'm all for a good protest you and me we used to march in the streets and yeah. pass out dvds and get on our bullhorn and you know yell at the federal reserve and we you know we used to do these things and we you know you and i marched on capitol hill yes we did you know and what 15 20 000 ron paul supporters it was a glorious day you know standing there on the stage in front of the capitol building you know saying you know time for a revolution it was peaceful but it wasn't a we revolution 10, like that thousand people behind us yeah Ten thousand. yeah me and ernie hancock on that stage and it was peaceful and do you remember the horrible things that we were called and what we were labeled as oh i mean that's another matter in, right there. I mean, the whole, oh, don't get me started. You yeah. know where I'm going. You know where I'm going. Ah. Uh, but no, I'm. I, that was a peaceful protest. That was a peaceful yeah. march. What we're seeing now, you're seeing national monuments completely defaced. What about that one picture I shared on Facebook? I, think, I don't know if I shared it um, on the show last week. But they were in front of a, the place where a, a bank once stood, right? It was a landmark. Yeah. It was a landmark, big plaque that mm -hmm. said this, on this spot, a bank once stood and they, this is the bank that helps slaves so that they could, you know, have their money and they could get, you know, get more. Open know, a bank account. Open a bank account mm -hmm. and get, get started into, you know, everyday life. And they defaced the whole thing. It was horrible. It was a horrible image. That's how ignorant and, and loose these people are who are looting and, and violating people in the streets and killing. Well, we're going to be talking about all these things. Uh, Angie, you found our guest, actually, and it's a, kind of an interesting story. I was like, who is this cool guy? <laughs> and how did you find him? I was on Facebook. And then what? I came across his uh, post. And his article, him talking about Antifa, and I and I shot a message to you. I'm like, hey, do you know this guy? And you're like, well, yeah. And our producer Jeremy knows him. I'm like, cool. Yeah, like totally a small world. She's like, mm -hmm. she's like, yeah, dude, we got to get him on the Gcast. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, Ben, of course. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, this is gonna be an easy one for Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> 
So it's great that you guys know one another. Yeah. And Ben has been in the thick of it. He really has got some great perspective oh, on all this. You should have saw the video he did when he went up to Adam Schiff and read him his Miranda rights. <laughs> Right in the middle of the Capitol building. That was him. That was him. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. That's just like one of the things he's done. Okay. I've probably seen more. I just haven't connected the two. Oh yeah, and he did a he did a remote for me with Jeremy outside of the um outside of the Capitol building another time. I forget what the instance was at that moment. It might have been impeachment or something. But we're gonna talk to Ben on Very the other side cool. of this break. Very and cool. He's I'm from excited. Uh, America's Voice News. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk to him about all that's happening in the country on the other side of the break on the Gcast. The Gcast will be right back after this short break from our sponsors. And the Gcast After Hours is back. Welcome back to the Gcast. I'm Gary Franchi with my beloved bride, Angie Franchi. Thank you, darling. And we're going to be talking with Ben Burquam in a moment here. And uh, he's got some updated information about that last tweet we showed you with that, that building burned down. He was actually there and saw all this stuff. But before we do, Franklin's Finest is where you want to get your survival coffee. Yes, you do. Wake That's up. a new bag. Yeah. <laughs> we, we've gone through three bags since the pandemic. and we're not. <laughs> this is survival coffee. Yeah, wakeupwithgcast.com is where you can get it. $97, and you get about 780 servings. Uh, it lasts you 25-year shelf life. Mm -hmm. It's non-GMO, and it's, it's uh, yummy. It's yummy. It's freeze-dried coffee, uh, pure Colombian, right? Up to 30-year to shelf life when unopened and stored in a dark and cool location. Oh, my God. I'll catch you in 30 years, Gary, with that cup of coffee. Yeah, we should, we should like, <laughs> test it. How old will we be? Oh. oh my goodness it's wake up at gcast.com it's delicious you try it i've given away two bags yes, of the have. three i've opened <laughs> it smells great i love it i like it i'm sitting here watching the assault on precinct 13 trailer with ethan hawk it's and, on you oh uh, that's who that was okay ethan hawk and mm. lawrence fishburne john leguizamo that's just remind i rem remember that movie like all these people descend on this police station and these cops are stuck inside and they got to defend it. It's just insane. But, like, that's basically what's happening right now. Ben, welcome to the show. Welcome. Hey, thank you both. It's great to be on with you. Absolutely. Uh, can we get Ben on the screen so we can see, see him? There he is. Okay, there's that tweet we were talking about. Go back to that. Show, put Ben up with the tweet. Because Ben had some in, insight on that. There we go. Uh, so Ben, welcome, welcome to the show. Here, uh, I wanted to talk about some of your backstory here uh, and what you do with America's Voice News. But you mentioned something about this picture on the screen here. Uh, that's not actually the police station. You said that was a homeless shelter. Well, that's so. It, no, it's not the police station. It's about a block and a half away down the street from the police station. And it's reduced to a one-story building now. It's basically just the lower level uh, that's left of that building. And from what I understand from one of the locals on the ground, they actually helped house homeless people in that building. Uh, so it's just one of the you know millions of tragic stories we've heard with uh, the the this attack, these riots, this nonsense that we have going on. Justified outrage at what happened to George Floyd but then turned into complete anarchy by the left that hates this country and want to destroy it from within. So, yeah, that's uh, it's one of those, you know, images that you just can't you can't really fathom it until you get there. And you see the just utter devastation uh, block after block after block. It looks like what I would you know, the, the, the uh, one I was thinking was Hotel Rwanda or, uh, you know, the, the Somali uh, um, uprising that we had. What was the Black Hawk Down? I mean, that's oh the my. feeling you wow. get when you go there. It's just like it's just it's a war zone. It's ruins everywhere. It's terrifying to just see the stuff on on video. Uh, but you've been there. You smell the embers. You smell you know the water and destruction. You said there was also a liquor store that was like totally burned down to the basement. Yeah, in fact, it was that one. The liquor store is right across from the police station. First, they looted it. And so they're all out there. And 
uh, one of my local friends, uh, Teresa Blair, who was on the scene actually videotaping live throughout this whole thing as gunshots were ringing out around her. That liquor store, they looted it and then lit it on fire. Like, you know, that's that's what you do, I guess, after you loot something now. And it burned not only down to the, the ground level, it burned down to the basement level uh, subfloor. And, and there, it's, there's about a 15 foot drop now down to that. And the water main, when I went there days afterwards, was still uh, on and just blowing water out into that basement cavity. Mm. And that's just, you know, one of dozens and dozens and dozens of buildings that have just been completely destroyed. Wow. Now, if you don't know Ben, you can watch his shows at uh, Frontline America and mm-hmm. Chasing Freedom on America's Voice News. Uh, so make sure you bookmark those. Uh, ben, tell us a little bit about yourself, your story, and how you came to be on the front line of the culture war. Well, I'm a uh, son of missionary parents. They were missionaries in Africa. Um, that was uh, me. We moved to the States when I was young and then uh, ended up here in California, the People's Republic of California. It used to be a great state, an amazing place to live. Wait a second. I grew up wait, in the foothills. Wait, pause. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm looking at this picture here, and you look bloodied and bandaged. What What is going on in this picture? I didn't that know that was, was you. That was, yeah, that was my initiation uh, w- into who Antifa, the, those, those sweet little tolerant anti-fascists they call themselves. Uh, that was Berkeley, April 15th of 2017. I went out there to uh, have a conversation. That was before I was really, I was, I, Frontline America didn't exist at that point. It was just Ben Burkwam with the phone and my uh, Make America Great Again hat. And I was out just trying to have dialogue. My whole thing was, let's find some common ground. Is there a place that we can come together? Are there things that we can agree on? And so I went out there. I actually, my wife was eight months pregnant at the time. Oh, uh, we had our daughter, our six-year-old daughter. And so I dropped them off. I let them go and go shopping. There's my wife. I'm also called an anti-immigrant. I'm called a racist and all these things. Uh, My wife was a refugee immigrant from Laos escaping communism. Her family came here after the war. And, uh, you know, one of the proudest moments of my life and her life was watching her raise her hand and uh, swear allegiance to this country. And so I'm I'm an honored dad and an honored husband. She's an amazing woman. And so uh, we went there anyways, excuse me, we went there to, um, I just went there to document it and I dropped them off and uh, my wife went shopping with my daughter and about an hour into the thing, um, I'm sitting there having a conversation. One of these scumbag Antifa thugs stole my hat, goes running into the crowd after him or goes running into the crowd of Antifa. And I make that, that, you know, proverbial fork in the road decision to go in after it. And I ended up Uh, getting punched in the mouth. I had the top of this ear kind of chopped off, had to be sewn back on. I got uh, stitches here, got hit over the top of the head with a stick. And what they do is they hit you, they hit you and then they run away. And so there's, there's tactics. All of this is really well organized, just in case your, your audience is wondering. Antifa across this country is tied in with the Democratic Socialists of America, is tied in with Indivisible and all these leftist organizations that are tied back in to George Soros, George Soros's Open Societies Foundations, and about a hundred other organizations that all work together in this new intersectionality movement of leftism to destroy this country. And so I didn't know anything about them at that point, other than they were thugs that were beating people up that were carrying American flags. And so I thought, well, I'll just go in there and have a conversation and see what happens. And I was, uh, you know, I was able to expose them. Uh, stood my ground, ended up, you know, bleeding. You can see that picture if you you have it up there again. That was uh, after the attack, and I ended up staying there for another ninety minutes before I had to call my wife from someone else's phone to Brian, have her come pick me back. Brian, back can you up put that? To, um, can you put that picture up? Full holy screen? cow, Ben! Put it oh up my full God. screen, please. Look at that. Yeah. So <sighs> that was I was I was uh, I stood there for about another ninety minutes, and uh, this was after though. Just so you guys know. As that was happening, and I was standing there calling them effing cowards uh, to their face, I said, this is, this is what, the, you know, because they, they're sitting there saying, Fat, we're the fascists. And I said, is this, is this what you guys support? Is this the violence you guys support? And that's my sign. I still have that bloody sign. I still have the T-shirt with the blood on it as a memory of what these guys are. And, um, you know, I stood there for 90 minutes, and ultimately they ended up getting driven out of Berkeley. The, the patriots that were there ended up, driving them and beating them up out of Berkeley. And it was the first time that the uh, Antifa was, was really defeated in this whole battle for America and driven out of the, the city. 
that has uh, bred them. It's a war. It's a it's a real war. It's a civil it a war. war. That's what's happening here. This is not it just. Is. I don't know where we go it from is. here. Well, and that's and that's the thing. So this was, you know, a few years ago when we my first interaction with them. And what we've seen is is an evolution of who Antifa is and what their tactics are. Uh, this was back when when the left, the media were Antifa apologists. They were, you know, these are just freedom fighters out there fighting against Nazis and racists and and these quote unquote fascists. Um, and and that they were able to get away with it until things like that. That was the same day that the bike lock. Uh, uh, Eric Clayton from the the professor out at in San Francisco hit the the guy peaceful guy to sit down and have a conversation hit him with a bike lock and after that and after a few other subsequent interactions with Antifa where they started the violence and they were it, it was clear the left had to change their tune and so what they did is they basically backed off went into hiding and then would just kind of pop up from time to time over the last couple of years at different events and start chaos and start trouble and then blame the so-called fascists and the the right wing and all this, um, and they've they've really been quiet until this uh, George Floyd situation. And I believe it's it, like you said, it's all by design. Mm -hmm. From the attack on President Trump, the Russia hoax, to the impeachment nonsense that we've seen, this has been a coup attempt from start to finish. To uh, coronavirus and and COVID and the the Wuhan flu, trying to undermine America with fake numbers. Now we're seeing this the, George Floyd's death was a tragedy, but to the left, it was simply an opportunity to continue the assault on President Trump and on America. Yeah, and that's continuing. And now, um, what, do you, what do you think about what his story is, Angie? Oh, I'm just imagining your wife picking you up all bloodied yeah. up. And this was, had you ever been attacked this badly before? Yeah, I've been involved in, in activism since I was in college. Uh, you know, okay. I graduated, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, maybe 15. I don't know, it's kind of blended together now. But uh, I was at Fresno State. I was, you know, I was used to being in confrontational places. I was in the fight against the, the gay marriage movement out there and against the open borders leftists. And so I've been in, in hostile situations before. And I have a really, uh, I've, I have a gift of staying calm in really uh, uncomfortable, tense situations. And so that's what I do. And that's what I, you know, I was doing was going out and trying to have these conversations, trying to find dialogue, trying to find some common ground. But that was the worst. That was the moment it was I had to make that decision is what I'm doing worth it. And the toughest part to me, it wasn't actually my wife and her reaction. It was my six year old daughter uh, when they came to, to pick me up and seeing the look in her eyes like, like, I can't process what's what happened to daddy. Why did people do this to my daddy? You know, like and, and for years afterwards. She she struggled with it. Anytime I'd go out and I'd say I was going to these places, she would come and hug me and say, don't go, dad, don't go. And um, and that, you know, that's like that's the stuff we're fighting for. That's why I do what I do is so that she doesn't have to live in the world where this is acceptable. And this kind of treatment of people for loving this country is, is tolerated. That's uh, that's hard, hard uh, to imagine. I mean, we have children. You yeah, know? I can only imagine how hard it is for them to let you go each time you walk out, you know. So you're going to yeah, work. Mm -hmm. and I, yeah, and I would say that, you know, what what's happened recently, the toughest one for me, you know, we've done a lot. I've gone to Portland, been attacked in D.C., been attacked. Actually, uh, with, uh, my friend Jeremy, we guys were talking about him. Uh, you know, we were down in Temecula, of all places, had a, a, a can full of bong water thrown and hit me in the back of the head. I mean, it's like just the, the craziest things all over the country, but – Really, it wasn't until going to uh, Minneapolis this this week. Uh, I flew out on Sunday, and I actually left church early. My family went to church. It was the first day our church reopened and all this craziness. And I, I walked out of that church building as my family was still worshiping, and I just thought, man, this this could be bad. And hang on a second. Sorry, guys. Uh, I, I thought this could be bad, and, and and prayed about it and really went out. But it is because what has happened, this this battle that we're in right now isn't isn't a political battle. It's a battle of good versus evil. And mm -hmm. evil has, does not care if you live or die. And in fact, they want to kill you. This the A lot of the people that are out there, these Antifa thugs, are really just, they're driven by evil and they could care less whether we lived or died. They're the same people. It's the same mindset that allowed uh, Hitler to, to burn Jews in ovens. It's the same mindset that allowed Stalin to, to kill 20 million people. It's that it's the disregard for human life. 
And so, you know, going into that, going into Minneapolis and then ultimately this week into D.C., it's it is a very, very, very scary and real time for America to to be concerned and to take appropriate steps to make sure that these people are defeated, not the good people that are. And this is the tricky part. It's the same thing that happens in a lot of revolutions. There are people that uh, are justifiably upset. George Floyd, his death was tragic. He should not have died. Now, he wasn't a perfect person, but he should not have died that day. But what has been used uh, by the left and even talking to his, his brother. See, I was out there when Terrence Floyd, uh, the week after his brother's death, he was out there saying, we need to call for peace. Oh, you know, wow. this, this rioting that's going on isn't, isn't right. Yeah. And so this like all of this, his family's come out and said, we need peace. The problem is the people that are organizing this, mm -hmm. the race hustlers of America and really like Black Lives Matter. You know, that's just an outgrowth of the Black Panther movement, the communist, anti-American leftist. Uh, and really racist organization that wants to destroy this country. And so you've got some good people that have good intentions for America that are then co-opted by these groups that want to destroy America. And it's really hard for average Joes that aren't in it like you and I are to decipher what's what. And so it's it's that's why it's even more critical for us to communicate effectively, to expose what's really going on and expose the enemies within that are guiding this thing. Well, just the visuals from an event that's going to be planned for, I think it's this weekend in our town, it's a Black Lives Matter rally. And the 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 photograph, the, the you know, the, the, the picture, the poster circulating online, uh, it's, it's yellow and it's black and it has a black clenched fist on the, uh, on the poster. And I'm looking at this thing and I'm going, you know, I know what that is. Like, that's the colors of anarchy, for one. And then you have this black fist, which is the like the Black Panther, right? Isn't that the Black Panther? That's the, the, the what they do. So, yeah. And but they're saying peaceful protests and it says peaceful yeah. in quotes. And I'm thinking to myself, yeah. really? It was in quotes? Yo, know, they put wow. like stars around it, you know, like either they're trying to accentuate it or, you know. Uh, but I checked it out. The mayor is going to be speaking, and they're going to march. They're going to be marching down the street. It happened. It's from twelve o'clock to uh, noon to two o'clock. Uh, but one just one town over from us, they boarded up the entire main street. But it's the visuals that they're. I believe they're telegraphing. Now, of course, this all could be completely peaceful. But like they did in in uh, in uh, sure. was it Batavia. It could be peaceful. Or was We're it praying for that. But when they put out that image. Mm -hmm. It tells a different story. Right. The image is, is telegraphing. They're using visuals that Antifa or extremists can relate to and then be drawn into. And then now they're in this in this group of people. So you got the mix of the peaceful people. And then you've got these the cell of people who are going to start agitating. And it always happens yeah. as soon as the, as soon as the sun goes down. A couple another couple towns over 45 minutes from us, Naperville. Like you'd never think this would ever happen in Naperville, Illinois, but they they looted the Pandora store. They were throwing bombs at the police. SWAT was out there, and this is right after a peaceful protest. Naperville, Illinois. What the hell is going on, Ben? You know. Yeah. Uh, I want to ask I mean, you. And, and, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, well, I mean it is. It is just. Please. It's. It's the. It's the. The base of this. The foundation of this is hatred for this country. And that's why you have people like the mayor of Minneapolis coming out and and stoking the fires by saying this is systemic racism. It goes back 400 years, never taking accountability for the fact that Democrats have run these cities where most black people are dying in for the last 50 to 100 years. They never take accountability for that or the fact that the Democrats were and still are the party of the KKK. Uh, it's you know, it's the the Nazis were national socialists all mm -hmm. it's like it, it's a rewriting of history to push this their, their narrative and what's and scary justify is it. It, it, as the media can keep up with it so they just so as long as they can justify the violence that's a great word as long as the media can justify the violence then they'll push it to that limit and as soon as it starts to feel like ah it's a little bit uncomfortable we can't really make a, a, an excuse for this you're burning down black community-owned businesses i went and interviewed uh, flora from Flora's Hair Designs in Minneapolis, who've been there for 40 years, and her store and her son's store 
had been completely destroyed. She was on the verge of reopening after all this COVID nonsense. And you can't have, but I, the irony of this is she is friends with the mayor. She is friends with the Democrat leaders in that town. And it was a week after this had happened, a week and a day after uh, this all had happened. And she had not gotten one phone call from any of the leaders in that city. Not one phone call from the police department, not one phone call from, from the fire it's department. Right. We were the first ones to go out and tell her story. And, and that's, that's what we're seeing right now. So as long as they can get away with the violence and justify it, the violence happens. As soon as they see it's not politically expedient for it, the organizers of this thing have their guys pull back and they, you know, and so it's this combination, but it's all tied together. As far as the organizing goes, they're all tied together. There, it's, it is th this conglomerate, this cabal of anti-American leftist forces that ultimately want to destroy this country. You know, if they can do it peacefully and we just surrender and give over to their socialist communist ideas and, and let them elect more people like AOC and Ilhan Omar, then they'll do it that way. But if they can't, then we're going to see more and more and more violence. Well, let's just hope and pray we don't. Uh, we're going to jump to a break, and I want to come back and ask you your thoughts on President Trump's recent decisions or threats, if you will, res with respect to unleashing the United States military through the Insurrection Act. I mean, if that's where we're going, oh my. So I want to get your thoughts on that and— uh, and we also have an, a new sponsor, not just Franklin's Finest. We'll let you know on the other side of the break. So stick around. You are listening to the GCast with Gary Franchi and Angie Franchi. And we're talking to Ben Berquam from Frontline America. We'll be right back. We gotta pay a few bills over here, so sit tight. And the GCast will return in a few moments. Time to return to the G-Cast with your host, Gary Franchi. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Angie Franchi with my husband, Gary Franchi. That's my name. Joining us right now is Ben Burkwam, journalist with Frontline America. Hey. Hey, Ben. What's up, guys? Hey, hey. It's been quite quite an interview thus far, just trying to unravel everything that's been going on and understanding. For me, it was really important to have you on the show today to really get a better under understanding, especially with your, um, with your experience with Antifa. Um, and for our viewers to understand a little bit who they are and what they've been doing and, and the rioting and the, and the madness that's been happening. Ben, you got quite a story. Uh, from, I mean, just Thank your, you. your history of activism to what you've witnessed in Minneapolis and across the country with respect to all these riots. Uh, before we went to break, oh, I do have to mention uh, our new sponsor is uh, 877-646-5347, Noble Gold Investments. Yeah. Uh, since we're on the edge of the apocalypse, uh, we've got survival coffee. Now we've got uh, gold. We if got you've got gold. A, if, you, if you need to get gold, Go to noblegoldinvestments.com or call 877-646-5347. The number's on the screen, and you can convert your IRA into gold. They are the professionals at doing so, especially with the market volatility. You need to have some uh, some precious metals in your uh, portfolio, and they will help you do that. The guys over there have been supporting me uh, and the Next News Network, and now we're proud to invite them uh, and be a sponsor here at uh, on the GCAST. So that's so really exciting, the growth of that. our channel. 22,000 subscribers, I mm -hmm. think. Uh, so, Ben, we were talking um, about the madness, right? The madness, the madness that's happening in the country. President Trump's talking about invoking the Insurrection Act. There's, there's now rumblings that uh, his staff members are supporting it. But also, we're seeing at the Pentagon, they're like, no, no. You know, he's, the, the Department of Defense, they're saying, no, we, we don't want to go there. Uh, you're seeing General Mattis throw him under the bus. It's almost like there's there's a like a, a military coup about to take place. I mean, you got you got chaos in the streets. You got every night things are burning, cops are being killed. But at the very highest levels in Washington D.C., you're seeing this this um, fracturing of power with respect to the Pentagon, the Department of Defense, and the Commander in Chief. So. What's your take on the president's 
um, move on the insurrection, on taking action with the Insurrection Act? Well, we are we are so close to to the loss of the rule of law. Uh, we don't have equal protection under the law now. We're, I mean, what what we see from the left and from this, uh, you know, the FISA court injustice that we've seen, the coup attempt. I mean, that was sedition, if not treason, by multiple players trying to undermine President Trump from the beginning. I think I it's a it's a scary thing to say, but I think that it, it's one of the last things that he could possibly do to stop what's coming because they they've they've done everything and they haven't been held accountable. That's the part that I don't understand is you've got people like James Comey who clearly, clearly committed sedition at minimum, if not treason. You've got, uh, you know, all of these players, McCabe and all of these players that, at the FBI that were working to undermine a candidate and then a sitting president. And then you've got these political players and most of the generals and the people that rise up in the military uh, are, are political beings. They, you know, they, they, in order to advance whether it's a, a, a Republican administration, uh, the more Republican-leaning uh, political, you know, military figures advance. If it's a Democrat president, then it, it, the, the, the opposite happens. And so we are at a place right now, it's a, it is really a terrifying place for America's future because if we don't have the rule of law, if we don't have justice under the law, then we no longer have a country. If even if we have this nice, you know, piece of paper, this document, the Constitution, if it's not enforced, then it, it no longer exists. And so we've seen that the the irony in all of this, and the scary part, and the uh, you know, kind of comical part too, is two weeks ago they were we were using police officers and national guards to uh, to arrest American citizens who wanted to reopen their businesses because we believed, and I still write, I believe that. It was unconstitutional what our states did. Now, President Trump made some recommendations, but what the states did going beyond their constitutional right to shut down worship services. And, and then we see the Supreme Court go and be, recently back up the California's decision. And so I think President Trump is right. It is. There's no question. I mean, there's no question that it is insurrection that we see going on from these groups, Antifa, from George Soros, from all these lefty groups in America. There's no question it's insurrection. The question is, does America have the stomach to stomach uh, what that looks like when that goes into effect? I mean, when you actually start, I mean, that's 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 where at that point, uh, bullets start flying and, you know, uh, people start dying in, in more than they're dying right now. And so it's a concerning place to be. No question about it. Well, think about, too. Were, were you going to say something? No, well, go right ahead. Think about, OK, we're in an election year. Can you imagine the Insurrection Act is invoked? The military is on the streets. People are dying. Brian, I think your microphone's open. Um, and then you've got total chaos. And then all of a sudden it's time to vote? Really? Yeah. I mean, yeah. are we going to post? Is the election going to get postponed because the Insurrection Act's been invoked? Because people are dying in mass in the street because Antifa is getting sh cut down by the U.S. military and Black Hawk helicopters? You know, taking out their, uh, you know, their their little apartment complexes where they where they hold up. I mean, I remember the World Trade Organization. Uh, they had the big riots that were going on there. Another black mm -hmm. block situation. I don't think Antifa was a thing back then. It was probably something else. But I remember they took over an entire complex, and the cops just let them stay there and let them, you know, run this thing like it was uh, New Jack City. You know. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, it, well, and, and just know that this is all political. The, the scary thing is that politics has been used. I mean, think about the, think about the Democratic uh, mayors and city councils and governors for the last five years that have been pushing sanctuary policy, inviting an invasion into our country, illegal aliens, protected, murderous, you know, criminal illegal aliens, not just people that are looking for a better life that have come over into our country and broken our laws. And now they're, they're giving the middle finger to our federal government who has sole jurisdiction over immigration all of this it's insur it's i mean it's the definition of insurrection we've been living in it it's just you know we I, I just question whether or not america has the political stomach or the stomach in general to to go through with what it means to take this country back because we, it's so far gone it's so far gone and i don't you're right though we're going into an election year this is all political uh, i would say the left probably wants that to happen so that then they can turn around and say, see, see, we told you he was a fascist. When in reality, they're the reason, they're the cause that all of this is happening. It's, it's their undermining of this country, their push for 
you know, no morality, uh, moral relativism to the point where anything goes as long as they say it goes and anyone is a target as long as they say they're a target. It's just, man, what you, ju- it is, what you just said, overwhelming. what you just said is like the self-fulfilling prophecy. They say he's a fascist, he's a fascist, he's a fascist. Now they trigger the problem and then he comes out with the solution that's the only solution to restore law and order. And then they point the finger back at him and say, we were right. Yes, it's, I know. It is, it is, um, it is evil, 100%. It is. And, it, and it's happening so quickly. It is overwhelming. It is happening so quickly. Each step, it's like, oh, well, they did that because of that. And, and the story behind it, it's just, again, it's their well, justification. You, you, yeah. You know what, what got me was as soon as the pandemic, the so-called pandemic hit, and, you know, I, I saw what started to happen. I was actually in Mexico at the time reporting. I was down on the Guatemalan border reporting on the illegal alien caravans that were still coming. They actually canceled the caravan uh, because of COVID, supposedly. All these leftist, American leftist organizations down there canceled this caravan. But anyways, I was down there and I started seeing the writing on the wall. And I'm like, man, no, we, we, we you know, this isn't going to happen. We're not going to lock down our country for a virus. This doesn't make any sense. You know, we're, we, we should take some proper precaution. But to see how willing people were to just say, please, please, government, give me safety. I mean, it's what Benjamin Franklin said. Those who are willing to give up uh, uh, liberty for some sense of, of safety deserve neither. And we're living through that. And I go out to my stores now and I, I see all these idiots, these lemmings, sheep walking around with masks on or driving in their cars with masks on everywhere they go. And I'm like, man, that that was probably the most concerning. I, I really had hope for America uh, until I started seeing that and how quick America was willing to just give up our liberty for the sake of some momentary sense of security. Oh, I feel you. Well, oh, God, yeah. Well, the, the interesting thing about what you just said about Ben Franklin's quote is that those who are willing to give up their security, right, um, are willing, willing to give up their freedom for security deserve neither. And so the first part is people already, they surrendered their their freedom by in the lockdown. Yeah. And the part two is now they're losing their freedom or they did I say yes. that right? Their security. Their secu- they're, losing they're, they're losing the security. Their security. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's we're we're living through both ends of that. And that's why you deserve right. neither. Because if you give up your liberty, you're giving up your security because you no longer have a, an ability to protect it. You no longer have the ability to, to fight for it. As soon as you give up those constitutional rights, security's out the window because that now it becomes Whoever's in charge, whether that's in your local municipality or at the, the head of the government, now gets to determine what security is for you. And in, in my case, in the communist state of California, security for me is if you don't do what we say, we lock you up. And, 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 and if you're a leftist in America, it is, well, free for all. Here we go. You guys, this is, oh, that's now we get to pick and choose who gets liberty. So the business owner, small business owner, the, the family that wants freedom from government is told, no, that liberty doesn't apply, but the thug who wants to go out and burn and loot, they get liberty to do it. It's just, it, you know, it's a, it's a paradox, but that's what socialism, communism, totalitarianism ultimately always ends up leading to. There's so much to talk about, Ben, you know, and we only have so many minutes in this program to get to, and we, we've got talking points here uh, that, that have been prepared for us, and we just... I mean, we can't get to everything here, you know. Um, yeah. What 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 block are we in? Are we in the are we in the C block already? Mm-hmm. This is the ten minute C block, and we're already over in it. Um, Angie, we do have to transition, but or can we uh, can we bring it into the? You want you want to hang out with us in the next segment, Ben? You, do you got a minute? Sure. Okay. Yeah. I I gotta go get a charger for my phone. I'm I'm getting a little low. <laughs> All right. Well, let's um let's come back on the other side of the break. We'll talk about what's happening in DC and then uh you can tell us give us an update on uh Rod Rosenstein and then We're getting through this. We'll get through this, man. Getting through it a little more. All right. We'll see you in the next in the next segment. Don't go anywhere. Gary Franchi will be right back after a word from our sponsors. And now, back to the G-Cast. 
Welcome back to the Gcast. I am Gary Franchi with my beloved bride, Angie Franchi. We're Here talking I with am. Ben Hi. Berquam. Uh, he's a journalist with Frontline America, and he has seen firsthand the devastation that is um, that's hitting America pretty hard right now. It's it's really really um, traumatizing to 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 talk about to to witness. Um, but Ben's seen it firsthand. I'm sitting here in a studio, you know. Ben's there, smelling the embers as they as they uh, fizzle out. Ben, back in D.C., they're um, the mayor of D.C. is trolling President Trump pretty hard. Muriel, ba Muriel Bowser. Bowser. Brian, your mic's open again. I can hear you tapping back there, please. Um, she pull, She's pulling the... It says, uh, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser pulled the police from the city in anticipation of the riots. What does that mean? How do you pull the police from the city? And then she wants out-of-state troops out of Washington. This is the same mayor that was having police arrest churchgoers and disrupting Hasidic Jews attending a funeral. What is the end game and motive for these state officials leaving the cities vulnerable to this unrest? And what do you see as a result of the policy? Hmm. Well, uh, again, ultimately, the ultimate goal for the left in America is to destroy the foundations of this country, to rebuild it in their socialist, communist, utopian vision. Um, and, and at, you know, there's another group similar to Antifa called by any means necessary. And that's really the mindset of the left in America. They also know that these attacks are not against them. I mean, we've seen some, some overflow and some unintended consequences where some of these people, like for instance, target, you know, uh, a complicit leftist company, all of a sudden now they're at the end of the spear on this thing because they were refused to give milk to these looters who were, uh, had been sprayed with tear gas. Now they are being destroyed. But the, what it is is basically them saying, you know, I, I, I don't care about the safety of my community. I care more about politics than I do uh, America. And, and so for her to do that, it's just, it's shameful. But it also points to the fact that she knows these people on, are on her side for the most part. They're not gonna go to her house. They're not gonna burn down her house. They're not gonna, uh, until, she doesn't do what they say. And so there's this, we're in this really scary, you know, uh, powder keg of we've got all of these forces at work to destroy the country from within. And as long as you're on their side, you're on the inner, you're in the intersectionality club with them, you're protected. As soon as you say something wrong, as soon as you don't paint uh, Black Lives Matter or I can't breathe over your business, then now you're in or, or your house now or the streets of your city. Now you're in the target. And so it's it's a combination of all of that, but it's just shameful. She's just p pathetic. Do, do, Brian, uh, Brian, pull up the NDI shot. I want everyone to see what the mayor of Washington, D.C. painted on the street. Look at that. Now, I don't know if you could see. It's, it says Black Lives Matter. That's the full width of the street. And at the very end, I'm going to zoom into this shot here, okay? I'm going to zoom in, and you can see a building... Right at the end of this street. Do you see what building that is? That is the White House. Right at the end, at the very center of that photograph. What she's done is she's painted Black Lives Matter on the street leading directly to the White House. It's in such large letters that there's no question this is probably one of the most epic trolls of President Trump, on President Trump, so that when he's flying down a Marine One, what does he see when he looks down on the, down on, on the streets of D.C.? Black Lives Matter. Like, what What did Trump do? What did he do? Right. I, this is just too much. They just continuously just want to bring him into this when right now, more than anything, we need to create unity. And and this is where we're headed. It's 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 dangerous. It's very dangerous. All right. You can yeah, take, the same take that off. Sheen, take that off. Shot, Brian. The same people that claim to want unity are the ones that are sowing division. It's the same people that call other people, you know, racist and sexist and bigots. They are. It's it's simply a reflection of themselves. They are. It's they're they're professional projectionists. And so when they say that you're a racist, really what they're saying is I am. And and you know, the, and and really we see that all the time. And so everything they say for the most part from the left is a lie. But this is where it goes back to. This is a battle of good versus evil. 
And we've got evil forces in this country where they are truly wanting to destroy this country. It is up to good to stand up, to rise up, and to expose it. The scary thing right now is they have so much of the political will, the, so much of the political voice in our country that it's very difficult to come out and say, to the point where they say, if you're white, you can't speak about this issue, unless you're one of our white liberal apologists who will continue the narrative that America is, you know, it's a white privileged nation. It's a, a nation of oppression. I've lived all over the country, all over the world, excuse me. I've lived in Africa. I've, I've seen our family seen what oppression is. And most of these people have no clue what they're talking about. This, th what they're asking for is not equality. It is control and power. We have more freedom and more liberty in this country than any other nation in the world, than any other history, than any other nation in the history of the world. And yet they're saying it's not enough. And that's that's a scary thing. That's a scary place to be. Tell it. Yeah, it really is. So, um, Ben, it's really been great to have you here on the program today. It really has. Love it's you guys. Been, it's been eye-opening. Thank you so much. Your, yeah. your perspective and what you've experienced. I really hope that our viewers have have received some sort of i've received comfort because what you have been explaining and what you've been able to articulate is what i've been feeling and been frustrated with yeah well what we need is more media outlets to tell the truth cnn msnbc the new york times the washington post all of these the la all of these leftist organization the media outlets are what are pushing this the only way that we can take back the culture is if outlets like the next news network like america's voice news exist and are able to push this and and are able to do it through social media as well so that's why all of this stuff is connected it's why it's so important for your viewers if you're out there and you feel like you don't know what to do you don't know how to get involved you have to push the truth that's out there and so you know we have to keep doing that you have to keep doing that and that's why we exist if, if we don't do it just say goodbye to the the best country in the history of the world Ben, we're going to put your links to all your social properties and how people can follow you down in the description below. Uh, we want people to, to follow your work. Uh, it's, it's definitely excellent work, and we'd love to have you back again. If you're, ever in, uh, if you're ever in the Chicago area, look us up. We'll have you in studio here, and uh, we can talk, have you know, an even greater in-depth conversation with you. And uh, you mentioned something real quick, and I'm, I know I'm prolonging this segment here again, but... You mentioned these liberal outlets, right, and how they're pushing the narrative. Well, ironically, there was a uh, the editor of a progressive newspaper who celebrated the protesters. Did you hear about this, Ben? Did you hear about this? I did no. hear about this. Uh, okay, so this progressive newspaper is like, yeah, you know, we we stand in solidarity with you, and then they actually stormed and trashed their offices. And she's like, oh well, no, what did you do? Why we we stand with you? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's just like what they did to CNN. I mean, it's CNN is their apologist, but this is the ultimate. What they don't, what people don't realize is ultimately you've got this this mishmash, uh, these un, strange bedfellows between the far left. You've got a combination of communist, socialist, anarchist, along with the radical Islam faction in America, all vying for power in this country. Ultimately. Half of them are going to get thrown off of buildings, depending on who ends up winning and that if they end up winning. <laughs> but they, and so they don't realize it when, you know, that like nobody likes them. They're just using them. It's just like the useful idiots that, uh, the, you know, the communists of old talked about. You, these, they're all useful idiots. And as uh, until they're, they're you know, they're, they're, they're not useful anymore, uh, you know, then they're, they're burned up like the rest of them. And it's, you know, it's crazy, but you're right. Uh, it's been a pleasure guys. And I, it's I'm been happy a pleasure. to do it anytime. Thank you. You're ben. tough. I like Ben. Yeah, he's awesome. <laughs> you rock out there. Thank you. All right, Ben. Thanks no, for joining us here. It's an, it's an honor to stand. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That was Ben Burquam. All of his links are down in the description below. And we want to leave you with a little bit of, um, <laughs> a little bit of levity here. We're not going to bring up that one clip just yet. <laughs> Uh, but there was a story oh, of no. this lady, this 102-year, where is that story? Do we have, oh, here's the feisty 103-year-old grandma. Do we have her picture? Feisty 103-year-old grandma celebrating her COVID recovery by drinking an ice-cold Bud Light. Where's Atta the, girl. Do we have the picture? I hope we have the picture. Do we have her picture? I've seen it. Let's see. Oh, it's it's hilarious. Are you able to grab it, gear? I'm... 
I don't know. I'm looking for the link here, and maybe I'll have to. Feisty. Feisty. I'll do it myself then, I guess, if that's the way it works. Um, it's image 11. Image 11. after she contracted a low-grade fever. Oh. We were muted this whole time? Dude, come All on. All right. Let's get it together. Where should I begin? I don't know. So, Jenny Stejna, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, a feisty Polish grandmother from Easton, Massachusetts, was the first resident of her nursing home to be diagnosed with the virus. Um, despite being moved to a quarantined ward, her condition worsened. Nursing home staffers eventually called Stejna's granddaughter, Shelly Gunn, and advised her to say her final goodbyes before it was too late. According to the Easton Wicked local, Gunn's husband asked Stejna if she was ready to go to heaven, and Stejna reported, reportedly responded with a resounding, Hell yes. <laughs> Are you ready to go to heaven? And she says, hell yes. I was not. Oh, my that goodness. That was shocking. Wow. Not expecting to read that. Very cool. Uh, devoted dads. Oh, whoop, 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 that's, that's, uh, whoop. to everyone shocked. Going too far. She made a full recovery from the virus as a means of celebrating her recovery. Nursing home staffer gave her a bottle of Bud Light, a drink which she loves, but has not gotten to enjoy in a long time. Oh, God, I want to hug her. I want to cheers to her. Let's cheers to... <laughs> let's cheers to... Uh, Jeannie. Jeannie Stejna. Oh. The feisty grandma. God bless you, grandma. Rock out. <laughs> All right, so we're going to close out the show. We have a clip here. Um, your, you, your ears might get a little... Might bleed. Yeah. Now you're probably all experiencing this at a certain level. This is just a reminder of how not to behave. Yeah, this <laughs> this is also like basically like there was a, a there was a, a a caption on this video that said this is Twitter in real life, <laughs> and I'm like this makes perfect sense, right? Uh huh. But this is also like really an encapsulation, uh, like a 45 second clip of what is it, what is happening in America right now. So we're going to go to that in a second. But, folks, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Remember to hit our sponsors. Wake up with GCast. Thank you to all the new subscribers and to our original subscribers. Thank you for coming back to watch us. Yes. We thoroughly enjoy these times with you. These are tough times. And I like being able to sit down with my husband and you guys and, and getting through this. And a special thanks to our guest, Ben Berquam. Links in the description below. Make sure you hit those. And always remember to... Stay gold. Ah, try me! Ah, Trump 2020! Ah, Trump, 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 Trump! Four more years! Four more years! Try me. What, try you? Ah! I mean, I got big ass ears and I can barely you hear you. I got some big ass ears and I still can barely hear you. <laughs>